So today we're going to talk about how to sleep like a baby, as I'm sure you guys have all seen those babies in their slumber. They're just so happy and knocked out. You just all wish you could sleep like that. Well, the thing is you can. It takes work. It takes um, certain behavior changes and certain routines throughout the day to ensure that your body's rested and stress is managed. So we're just going to talk about understanding and correcting your sleep issues um, in this short video. Well, short for YouTube, not short for other social media. So on the agenda today, we're going to discuss understanding our stress. You know, what is it all about? Where does it come from? What kind of stress there is? Uh, what are the negative impacts of stress on sleep as well as other issues? And what are some corrective actions that we have? We'll discuss testing to find out the problem and corrective actions for each one of the different types of problems. And I'll give you guys a link to be able to purchase a test and be able to actually um, do this yourself. This is not a test that, that, you know, that I sell or anything like that. This is the company that I work for lifetime. They're amazing and have some of the best products when it comes down to holistic um, health and wellness. Now we'll discuss some supplements. Once again, lifetime supplements to help you recover and sleep. Um, they're wonderful. I use them myself. My wife has used them in the past and has lost you know, a lot of weight, has fixed her sleep issues because of using them. So I just want to share those with you now. And we'll discuss some lifestyle suggestions to include a good sleep routine starting from the morning um, to ensure that you have good routine throughout the day to ensure you get good sleep at night. So, you know, you're probably one of these people, you know, you're either always on the go. Um, you might be having a high stress job. You may be a caretaker or a sole provider in your household. You just, maybe your plate is too full and you're just always running behind. And here's when you need stress hormones in life, because we know that stress response is needed in our system. And it's something that we should have in our bodies in order to be able to overcome certain challenges, right? When there's animal attacks, bears attacking you, a lion are attacking you, that's when we need to have stress response in emergency situations with sports performance and things like that. In proper amounts, it is very good. Times when we don't need stress response, right? When we're driving around in traffic, when we have our deadlines and our, and our uh, calendar is just way over packed for the hours that we have in the day. So we keep expanding that um, hours availability and giving ourselves less for recovery and always being late, always kind of running around and always having five minutes too little in our day. You know, so what is cortisol? Cortisol is one of those master hormones. It is often referred to as the stress fight or flight response hormone. It regulates a lot of different things that you see below uh, raises, maintains blood sugar. It keeps your blood pressure up. It involved. It is involved in inflammatory process, your immune system function and recovery. You know, and it plays a lot of functions and it has a lot of side effects um, when it's in the wrong range. You know, it's produced by adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are small little walnut-sized glands that sit on top of our kidneys, and they are responsible for managing our stress response. And they get tired sometimes. They get overworked, and then we start having issues. So the physiology of stress, you know, the problem is that stress is no longer acute. You know, back in the day when we had to go hunt or we had to respond to a stressor, it was a momentary response. Our body raises that fight or flight response and my body goes, okay, time to act a little bit outside of my normal performance to survive this stressful environment or to go hunt my food, whatever it is I need to respond to. The problem is now it's sustained and chronic. It's no longer in these short bursts. There's stress on us at all times, right? It's almost like if I had you hold a glass of water, it's not a big deal. But if I had you hold that glass of water for four hours straight without moving, well, that becomes a different story. That's kind of like our body handles stress right now. You know, so the bottom line to this, our perception determines the effect of that stress. So some of these mentally resilient people are great because they don't get mentally overwhelmed. But that doesn't mean that our body still can't get overwhelmed. Our body is not as strong as our mind. You know, Stephen Hawking has talked about in the past, that's just the reality. We can become very mentally resilient. But if our body is not keeping up because we're not providing the right recovery and the right nutrients and replenishment, nurturing, it is not going to keep up with our mind and fall apart. So the mind doesn't matter how strong it is. We still have to use this vessel to get from point A to point B. And there's different types of stress, right? You may be managing your mental stress, but you're not seeing the oxidative stress that's coming from your body. And that's going to be the uh, pollution, the chemicals that you get from your makeup, you know, getting sick, uh, things like that. 
And then the physical stress of not getting good enough sleep, of not getting good recovery, of pushing your body too much, injury, pain, all those things are going to be physical stressors in the body. So once again, don't think just because in the mind you're doing okay that the body is not having issues with sleep due to other stress responses occurring in our system. So it's probably cortisol that is hurting your sleep. You know, cortisol follows a diurnal rhythm, it means that it starts high in the day, as you can kind of see here in the graph. Why? Because before we were a hunting and gathering society, You're supposed to wake up with a lot of that fight or flight in your system. So you go out and hunt your food, come back to the cave, recover, fall asleep, and then do it all over again. So you can see as the day progresses, it's supposed to gradually come down to this minimal point at night. When that occurs, your brain's going to go, okay, time to de-stress. Instead of laying there like some of you are with the brain just going to do do to do thinking about what's to come or, you know, what kind of happened in the day and just thinking about problems or whatever solutions, just always on. Your body's supposed to shut that off, time to sleep, fall asleep within five minutes. Yes, within five minutes. It's not all bad. If cortisol is optimal, like I said, it plays many positive functions in the body. Um, those are all important. And we need to make sure that we have just the right amount. If we go too high or we go too low or it's fluctuating crazily, then it becomes a problem. So here's different stages of kind of different values of cortisol and how they're working, you know, and symptomatically on our body. So starting out first, obviously we have those optimal values, but first issue is going to be when we start to elevate our cortisol. It's when we have more fight or flight response in our system. And it, one of the easiest ways this happens, if you're not getting, getting adequate recovery at night. So waking up tired or waking up too early is one of the symptoms. You know, other symptoms are going to be if you're a night owl and you can't go get to sleep within those five minutes, like I mentioned. If you feel tired and wired at the same time, but the body is physically exhausted, but the mind is just going zoom, right? It's always on that go mentally. You sweat easily. You know, you may have unexplained uh, elevated glucose levels, so your blood sugar. You may have sugar cravings, especially at night when it will show up a lot. You may wake up during the middle of the night and can't fall asleep. Once again, the brain just starts going and you can't get back to sleep. So once you stay there for a while, then your body's going to get to lower cortisol and get to adrenal insufficiency, where you're going to have cravings for salt. Some other symptoms may include dizziness or lightheadedness when standing up quickly, uh, difficulty staying asleep, but not hard to fall asleep. You may be able to just fall asleep nice and tired because you're exhausted throughout the day, but then you just can't fall asleep even though you're tired. Or stay asleep even though you're tired. So lower blood pressure, and you may get hangry. If you go without food for three to four hours, you notice blood sugar crashes out. You're not able to maintain, and you get that hangry feeling. And then optimally, what we should feel like, you should wake up with energy and motivation, ready to go, ready to start your day, feeling good. If you wanted to work out in the morning and something you do, you should feel the energy to go do that. There shouldn't be any energy crashes throughout the day. Yes, that is normal. Yes, there's plenty of people living their life that way that are actually taking care of their body and their stress response and their sleep. You should have normal blood pressure, optimally around 80 to 120. You shouldn't have any cravings for sugar, salt, or crunchy things. Yes, you get hungry, but it shouldn't be that strong craving. Controlled moods and no anxiety. Now, that's the normal response. So stress leads to poor sleep, and poor sleep leads to more stress. You know, so it can worsen cortisol, and it becomes this vicious cycle. You know, the goal is seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, even without waking up to go to the restroom. That is normal. Your body is perfectly capable of holding urine in your bladder the entire night unless there's some sort of pre-existing condition that you've been diagnosed with. But the reason you wake up is, has to do with stress response. You happen to have urine in your blood or in your, sorry, in your bladder, and that's the reason you think you woke up. But there's other reasons that that is caused by. If I had more time, I'd get into it, but I don't want to make this too long. So, right, your body and sleep debt is going to have the following issues. You know, decreased cognitive functioning, increased cortisol production, increased risk for diabetes and heart disease and obesity. You can have hormone imbalances because cortisol is one of those master hormones. When it goes out of whack, it throws the whole system out of whack. You may have decreased metabolic rate, means your body doesn't burn as many calories throughout the day. Weight gain can come from that. Increased sugar cravings, things like that will happen when you have cortisol issues. So the problem is not just being tired daily. Obviously, if you're not getting adequate sleep, you know, you can see all these issues that can come from that as we just discussed. 
you know, but these are some symptoms that you may not think about that come from lack of sleep that are come from elevated stress or lower stress. So with elevated, we may be blamed, maybe blamed to uh, our irritability, waking up exhausted, sleep disturbances, um, cravings for sugar, lack of focus, poor food absorption. You know, your body goes into that fight or flight. It's going to drive blood away from digestion into extremities because you're in survival mode. You're not in that restore and digest mode. You may have lack of focus. Memory starts to go, right? You go from one end of the house to the other end of the house. By the time you got there, you forgot what you even left for. Or you go to the store to buy one thing. You walk out with four things except for the one that you came for. You have poor food absorption, right? You are not what you eat. It's not, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. So be careful. Make sure you're getting that food absorption. You may have issues with being frequently sick. You may have poor sex drive, low libido. You know, and oppositely, insufficient levels may be to blame for waking up often in the middle of the night, even though you're falling asleep, poor blood sugar regulation, you know, like I was talking about getting hangry, craving for salt, low energy throughout the day, and then poor workout recovery, and literally no desire to even work out overall. So some corrective actions, as I promised to you guys, you know, step one is understanding some testing. You know, on the upcoming page, you'll see there's an um, icon that you can click in the ebook itself, you can't get to it through the video, so you need to go to the ebook itself uh, or YouTube video has the links attached. You can't click on them, just copy and paste into the URL. Um, that's the only way it can get those to you. Or if you have the ebook from the website, just click on the icon. But you'll be able to get the test that helps you to measure your levels because we don't mess without measuring. You will have. Uh, other tracking sleep abilities. So if you click right here, same thing in the in the ebook or in the uh, the YouTube links, you'll be able to get the sleep trackers that'll help you kind of purchase them and, and be able to find good ones. Uh, we'll discuss sleep and stress management through supplements, kind of supporting that. Uh, once again, Lifetime Supplements, amazing products, uh, very reputable, very trusted company. And then we'll discuss some lifestyle adaptations. So first step one and two, right? We need to test your stress response and then we need to track your sleep. So stress recovery, to purchase your test, you'll be able to click here. Um, this reflection during a pattern of cortisol versus just one point in the morning. This is a saliva test. You're gonna spit into four tubes throughout the day to measure four points throughout the day to see how you range against normal responses. Because when you do this in a doctor's office, you only check it in the morning. It doesn't really tell you enough, especially not how to correct it in addition with lifestyle changes. You know, it represents your free bioavailable form of cortisol. It's convenient by in-home saliva collection. You don't have to go to a lab. It's a kit that gets mailed to your house. You take the collection, you mail it in. It all comes prepackaged, and then it comes, um, gets mailed to the lab, interpreted, and the results come to you. Um, it comes with a session of registered dietitian, so there's no additional cost, no hidden fees. You'll be able to purchase this and get help with how to create corrective actions, be able to answer all of your questions in detail with a scientific approach from somebody that is certified in it. This wouldn't be me. And step three is gonna be supplements to help stress and sleep. You know, the first four here, you can kind of take a look and see. Uh, two are gonna be for high cortisol. One is if you're on thyroid meds and one is if you're not on thyroid meds. This, this one, adrenal complex, will be for low cortisol to make sure to boost your energy throughout the day. Um, but this one's going to kind of lower that ability, uh, lower that stress response to help you sleep at night or sleep longer throughout the night um, and not wake up so early in the morning. And then combination cortisol, this will be kind of just to heal adrenal glands. And these two really assist with stress management as well as sleep directly. Um, this is an amazing sleep supplement that really helps so many people. I love it. I live and breathe by this. I wouldn't ever give this up no matter what. Uh, and the magnesium buffer chelate. Um, if you ever get Charlie horses, cramps, restless legs at night, this will really help you. And it's one of the best forms of absor absorption of magnesium is when it's buffered. Um, once again, click the pictures for uh, price and additional information and details and to purchase these products. Um, these are not my products. Once again, this is Lifetime, just what I use for my company. Uh, so go ahead and go there. The links will be in the YouTube video. Um, in the links down below, just copy it into your URL or use the actual ebook. And then lifestyle suggestions for different symptoms, right? So you have different responses that you get from these tests and kind of what to do when each one comes back a certain way. You can see there's certain corrective actions depending on what the stress response test tells us is going on. You never mess with hormones without testing because sometimes symptoms of high can be actually when it's low and your body's just down-regulating, up-regulating receptors. 
So you always need to actually find out what's going on. So those are some different options. If you want to read through this, pause the video and you can get a little bit more detail or look in the ebook. Similar here, once again, you're going to have different examples of what can the test um, kind of let us know what's going on. And you can see some differences between different corrective actions, um, different symptoms that are experienced with each one of those uh, situations. And here's last but not least, some things you can do right away yourself without any testing, without any supplementation. These are just choices that you need to make throughout the day um, in order to make yourself be better sleep at night, in order to have better sleep at night. You know, it all starts from the morning. Get up early. You know, I usually suggest waking up at 6 a.m. That's the optimal time for us. And start with a workout. Rev up your heart rate, even if it's just short duration. Signal to your system it's time to get up. If you can do it in the morning while you're getting some sun, even better. Even if it's just a brisk walk, um, something to get outdoors. I love being barefoot, grounding yourself with the earth, receiving that energy. If you believe in that kind of thing, I'm an empath. I absolutely do. You know, limit your stimulants. Avoid caffeine. Caffeine's not the devil that people make it out to be, but don't have it past 12 p.m. Avoid nightcaps. Yes, they may help you relax and fall asleep, but in the bigger picture, it's poison. It's bad for your long-term um, stress response. It's a depressant, and it actually hurts your REM sleep. You may feel like you're sleeping, but you're not getting adequate sleep. Munch on some veggies. You know, eating about a half cup of starchy vegetables at dinner may help you with serotonin, but make them be complex. You know, lean on things like uh, steel cut oats or sweet potatoes, you know, brown rice, just a little bit. I even do it a little before night. Um, if you guys really need a good supplement for that, I have other things I can recommend. Just reach out. Uh, the Generation You Can is really wonderful. If you don't know what that is, reach out. I'll let you know. And then decrease blue light. You know, this is really bad. So, like on my phone, if you guys can see it in the picture here, if I triple click, click my screen, you'll see it change to a red hue. This is going to protect um, protect my eyes from seeing that blue light. So I have that on my electronics. Set an alarm, not just to wake yourself up at the same time each day, but also to go to bed at the same time as a reminder. Always try to go to bed by 10 p.m. when possible. Wake up at 6 a.m. And while you're making the adjustments and fixing your sleep, do that on your days off as well to get your body set in that circadian sleep pattern. Start turning down the lights, you know, two hours, an hour before you go to bed. Dim the lights in the house to signal to your system it's time to go to bed. We want that melatonin production kicking in. So that's why we reduce the blue light and we also dim the lights in the house. When you lay down, turn down the temperature. If possible, I live in Phoenix. This is impossible or my, you know, my electric bill will be 500 a month. But get it down to 68 degrees. Get a warm blanket. You'll notice you'll be more cozy and right away sleep better. And last but not least, black it out. Even take the and tape the uh, standby lights in your electronics, your alarms. Completely make it pitch black or put a black mar black mask over your eyes if you can do that to really create a blacked out environment for your body to so get as much melatonin as possible. And don't tackle this alone, guys. Get your partner on board. You know, get somebody else with you to help you get through this. You need accountability. So find an accountability or meditation partner. We didn't talk about meditation, but that's something you definitely should be doing. But that's so much more to discuss there. There needs to be a whole new um, ebook. But if you need help there, reach out. I'm a yoga instructor and meditation coach as well. Um, and then hire a coach to get you through the process, right? It doesn't have to be me. There's other great, wonderful coaches out there, you know, that need to fit your style. I'm more of a, you know, kind of a fatherly coach I'm gonna tell you what you need to hear not necessarily be you know too soft or kind to you it's time to get it together fix it do it it's up to you and nobody's gonna do it for you if that's not your style fit find a different coach that matches your style somebody that's gonna be more loving and nurturing those are wonderful coaches as well that's just not who I am contact me at Anton at oaktree.life for coaching advice you know the actual slide deck from this video I'll send it to as many of you as I can um, if you shoot me an email at this oh, Anton at oaktree.life and eventually It'll, be, it'll live at www.coachinghub.us um, after July 31st once the website goes live and locks tons of other good content for you to see. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the time and reach out if I can be of any help. Have a great day.